look, in Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro gave his people, like, groceries, okay? And, and then he canceled all the rents and mortgages. Guys, kindness is evil. <laughs> you know? Gosh. Guys, what's he up to over there? Right? <laughs> Just giving people food. <laughs> Communism, kindness, they both start with K's, so that's <laughs> kind of something. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a quick note, what you're about to see uh, throughout this video is from the live virtual comedy shows I'm doing called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Show. So throughout these episodes, you guys are going to hear some people laughing in the background and that's because it is recorded in front of a live virtual audience uh, in, a, in, in the Zoom showroom so to speak. And if you want to be a part of this, if you want to be a part of these live virtual events, you can grab tickets for future shows right now. They're happening every single Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. So you can grab your tickets, go to the, go to the description, check out the link for these shows, come join us. Uh, and I'm going to be donating a portion of the ticket sales to various different grassroots organizations, activists, journalists, and small business venues. Uh, every single week it'll be different material. Every single week it'll be a different um, organization or venue that I will be helping out. So that's, uh, that's something that you can, you can be a part of if you choose so. So grab your tickets. Now on to the episode. Before we get into this week's episode, I just want to let you guys know that content like this is often suppressed, so uh, I need your help to make sure that people see this video. Uh, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button if you enjoy this stuff. And if you want to support uh, this show and, and all of the, the content that I produce uh, on a weekly basis, you can become a sustaining member over on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member directly on my website or via Patreon. And you get a bunch of uh, cool stuff. You get early access to longer full episodes of Forkful of Noodles. You get uh, unreleased uh, stand-up comedy and storytelling stuff. You get free tickets to virtual and live stand-up comedy shows. Uh, so go to ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate uh, and consider becoming a sustaining member or making a one-time donation. Now on to the episode. But since the media and the oligarchs that rule the plutocratic system uh, want the masses to believe that Bobby Seale and, and Huey Newton and Fred Hampton, the rank and file of the Black Panther Party, were some kind of anarcho-terror group trying to raise Black Atlantis from the depths of the Mississippi. I thought it'd be important. <laughs> I thought it'd be important to talk about their 10 points plan uh, and uh, what, they're, what the Black Panthers actually based their philosophies and actions out of. The first point stated this, we want freedom. We want the power to determine our destiny of our Black community. We believe that Black people will not be free until we are able to determine our destiny. This is pretty straightforward, right? Like I even think like the most closed-minded individual can say that this is pretty logical and sound. And if you're confused, Let's put it this way. What would a rich, out-of-touch white person know about the struggles of an underfunded, over-policed neighborhood? The answer is not a good goddamn thing. <laughs> no. Yeah, especially when you're all unwilling to listen and only care about the retweets and the likes. The second point stated, we want full employment for our people. We believe that the federal government is responsible and obligated to give every man employment or guaranteed income. 
We believe that the white American businessmen will, it, will, it, we believe that if the white American businessmen will not get full em, uh, employment, the means of production should be taken from the businessman and replaced in the community so that the people of the community can organize and employ its people and give a high standard of living. You, you yeah. said what I'm thinking. Yeah. This is an idea that's still being argued for today, by the way. In 1966, the Black Panthers were not just advocating for a universal basic income, but also a federal jobs guarantee that would ensure that every American is taken care of in this country by a government that should be, and it should be for and by the people. Look, even most conservative constitutionalists should be on board with this idea, right? The idea of this nation is to have a government for and by the people. The role of the government should be to provide for us with us in charge. That's what makes universal basic income a constitutional idea, which means consti the, the Constitution kind of might be socialist. And if you're hearing some pops, that's because every conservative in the country just had a minor stroke. <laughs> <laughs> as that sentence made it out into the ether. <laughs> now, for as much as Republicans and Democrats are concerned about putting Americans to work, they and their crony capitalist friends don't really provide jobs that equate to a high standard of living or, you know, like a standard of living. And right to work advocates say that this notion is false because Americans are doing great. You know, before the 2020 pandemic, they argued that the unemployment rate was so low that there are two, sometimes even three jobs for every American. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at how much they have the right to work and how they're exercising these rights. It's amazing. <laughs> Guys, the sound of victory is an exasperated collective sigh from the working class as they plop onto their couch to pass out after a 19 hour day. <laughs> it's victory right there, you know? America, the land of the employment and the home of the overworked and underrepresented. <laughs> Look, the unemployment rate due to the pandemic is getting so high that it's becoming mentally ill. That's why it's called a depression, okay? Even the unemployment rate looks at life and asks, oh, what's even the point? <laughs> <laughs> America is so depressed with its high unemployment rate that it hasn't seized the means of its pants in like a century. <laughs> Take your time if you need it to put that one. <laughs> and look, before everybody starts <laughs> arguing with me, uh, I do want to point, point this out. There are no fast food employees driving the newest sedan with Bluetooth configurations and a backup camera. They are driving their parents' hand-me-downs that has a very specific way that you have to start the car without the engine catching on fire and spontaneously combusting all no geo metros simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yep. yep. <laughs> This is a call to abolish class slavery in our society. The working class makes virtually no money, but is placated to on a consistent basis. Questions on how we're going to help fund a decent living condition are met with, well, where, where's the money going to come from? Where, where, where's the money going to come from? But no such questions are ever asked about bank bailouts, extraordinary military budgets, the like new gold toilets for the rich, and the astronomical amount that we spend on turtle max wax that's used on Jeff Bezos' head. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, that vicious dome is so shiny, you can see that oppressive glisten from space. <laughs> and the question must be asked, why the working class can't have a higher quality of life where we don't have to work two to three jobs and pretend like that's a good thing? What makes us undeserving of providing a life for ourselves and our family that doesn't involve fearing whether our bills are paid up, our roots don't disappear, and where the next plate of food comes from? 
For any politician or person or public figure that goes against the second point of the Black Panther Party, goes against providing a good life for hardworking Americans. Now, the third point states, we want an end to the robbery by the capitalists of our black community. We believe that this racist government has robbed us and now we are demanding the overdue debt of 40 acres and two mules. 40 acres and two mules were promised 100 years ago as restitution for slave labor and mass murder of black people. We will accept the payment in currency which will be distributed to our many communities. The Germans are now aiding the Jews in Israel for the genocide of the Jewish people. Germans murdered 6 million Jews. The American racist has taken part in the slaughter of over 50 million black people. Therefore, we feel this is a modest demand that we make. Now, this is the idea of financial reparations, right? And at this point, you can translate 40 acres and two mules to a decent house with two full-size sedans with backup cameras. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this idea is met with a deafening, where's the money go come from? <laughs> you guys, where, where the money go come from? And again, I gotta say, why don't you ask your fucking banker friends who keep robbing us blind every chance that they get? In fact, now we're adding our site back to this modest demand as well. That'd be fun to get back. The fourth point states, we want decent housing fit for the shelter of human beings. We believe that if the white landlord will not give decent housing to our black community, then the housing uh, and the land should be made into cooperatives so that our community with government aid can build and make decent housing for its people. Look, housing is a basic human right. The fact that America, in America we see thousands of homeless people that we as a society are unwilling to help means that we're failing to provide human rights to our citizens. And a lot of these homeless folks do have jobs and some of them are veterans. And yes, some of them are mentally unstable, but that doesn't mean that they're undeserving of help. We see this happening today in, in, with what's happening during the pandemic, right? With the loss of jobs and the pay cuts from the working class. There's a moratorium on evictions, but there's no cancellation on rents, mortgages, or debt, which means that even though most of us have a roof over their head, our heads, the mounting debt associated with that roof is clogging the gutters and ensures that we might wind up being homeless. Then the banks and other financial institutions can come in and they'll seize these properties which is heartbreaking and awful. And it'll mean that most of us will have to move back in with our parents. And look, that is an evil that I do not wish on any of my enemies, right? <laughs> as Americans, <laughs> as Americans, I do believe that we have the right to masturbate in peace, you guys. <laughs> it's part of the human rights. But, you know, hey, silver lining, maybe we can record some of those hijinks and hope we get picked up for like a three-season run on CBS. You know, maybe if that happens, to I'll get that house back. Now, here's the thing. The Black Panthers actually put this into effect in their communities in order to protect their family from the FBI who was targeting the Panthers. They called them panther pads, which were three to four bedroom apartments uh, that would have uh, maybe 10 panthers living in there, uh, running rotating chore lists and, uh, uh, and would have 24 hour security as well. So here is what that looked like. You might have a three bedroom apartment that might have 10 panthers staying there, sharing bedrooms. Uh, the living room was basically also a bedroom. We called them panther pads. Somebody would be on 24-hour security. Uh, somebody was responsible for cleaning the place. Uh, often it was a rotating list of responsibilities. It was a sense of community that we created. Rank 
of Fowl was the everyday members that did the daily work of the, uh, of the party. They the ones that made the party. The backbreakers, the one you put all the work on. Now look, this idea can very easily be put into effect today. And if we did something similar to this, it would help communal living thrive and possibly also end homelessness, which would be huge. So the fifth point states, we want education for our people that exposes the true nature of this decadent American society. We want education that teaches us our true history and our role in the present day society. We believe in an educational system that will give our people a knowledge of self. If a man does not have knowledge of himself and his position in society and, uh, and the world, he has little chance to relate to anything else. Here's the thing, history is written by the winners. And that's obviously because if it was written by the losers, it'd be all like whiny and stuff, you know? About how like the winners cheated and how sore the losers are from all of the oppression. The problem is sometimes the bad guys win and try to convince us that they're the good, good guys which is why history has turned into a college freshman level creative writing workshop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, American history is boiled into these popcorn facts, like uh, George Washington chopping down the cherry tree so he can manifest destiny produce, right? <laughs> or Ben Franklin inventing electricity with some keys and some STIs. Or Thomas Jefferson owning a mansion in Virginia named after an artisanal pasta sauce, Monticello. <laughs> <laughs> and we celebrate all these three fine American presidents by putting them on currency that we pass around more frequently than Ben Franklin passed around his herpes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> American history likes to celebrate the shit out of robber barons like Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller, mm -hmm. but neglects to point out that they constantly advocated for violence against striking workers. Andrew Carnegie specifically was known to publicly claim that he was on the worker's side and then in private would talk about crushing the worker and their precious unions too. Andrew Carnegie would give speeches from his private train, which in the late 1800s was kind of like owning a private jet, you know? <laughs> yeah, and guys, it would get pretty crazy on those trains, okay? Yeah, a lot of bare ankles. <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks wiggling some toes. <laughs> Very naughty. Very <laughs> naughty. But look, America doesn't celebrate the strikes that gave us our precious weekend, the eight hour work day, a lunch break, the right to masturbate in bathrooms because we're living with our parents. <laughs> America doesn't celebrate, the, <laughs> yeah. America doesn't celebrate the Black Panthers who were advocating for the truth, fighting for the working class and ensuring that oligarchical oppression wouldn't continue. The winner shouldn't write the histories through their skewed lens History belongs to us losers because we know the truth of how the winners won. Mm. The six point states this, we want all black men to be exempt from military service. We believe that black mm. people should not be forced to fight in the, mil in, in the military service to defend a racist government that does not protect us. We will not fight and kill other people of yeah. color in the world who, like black people, are victimized by the white racist government of America. We will wow. protect ourselves from the force and violence of racist police and the racist military by whatever means necessary. Okay, to put this into context, this was during the Vietnam War, which a lot of people were actively protesting. Not just the war, but also the draft. But this is still prevalent today because we're, the working class are the ones that are sent to go fight the illegal wars of the rich to acquire resources that don't belong to them from black and brown countries. 
And if they want reparations out of it, that's going to cost a little bit more than 40 acres and two mules. In fact, the cost of the American war machine is roughly $2 trillion. And there's no one asking, but where did the money go come from, you guys? <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. If we decrease the spending by half, we could fund Medicare for all and all of the infrastructure programs, which would cost $350 billion and an additional $22 billion to feed all of the Americans in this country. And then we'd still have enough left over for 40 acres and like way too many mules. <laughs> <laughs> Just so many mules, you guys. In today's pandemic climate, the whole world has decided to call a ceasefire from military operations. But instead in America, we have a former CIA director as our Secretary of State calling for more bombings of Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. And there is logic behind these actions, guys, okay? If the virus, SARS-CoV-2, sees how big our explosions are, it'll then realize how big our dicks are. <laughs> and then it won't try to invade America. That's flawless logic. It's flawless American exceptionalism logic right there. America also utilizes economic wars in the form of sanctions. From Iran, Venezuela to Nicaragua, American sanctions have been put into place specifically to hinder these nations' wealth and the distribution of aid and medical supplies. Why? Because you're evil, guys. Look, in Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro gave his people like groceries, okay? And, and then he canceled all the rents and mortgages. Guys, kindness is evil. <laughs> you know? Gosh. Guys, what's he up to over there? Right? <laughs> Just giving people food. <laughs> Communism, kindness, they both start with K's, so that's kind of something. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I know, I know there's probably some of you guys, right, asking, hey, why are we even trying to control Venezuela? And the official statement from the White House, I, just, I, just, I received it this week, the official statement from the White House <laughs> is, uh, shut your dumb fucking face, you commie pinko asshat, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. America is also enacting an economic war against its own citizens. Look, there is an infinite reserve when it comes to the military budget, but a lot of confusion about math and balancing the books when we talk about, you know, things like Medicare for all, educating people, food stamps, and just helping poor people in general. A lot of confusion about it. Here's 1964, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and MLK pushed for a federal aid program for black Americans who, much like poor white Americans, were stuck in poverty. This would help both black and white Americans, right? Uh, and, uh, and the budget would rival the military budget, which it should. If you really want true equality in this country, I think we should fund programs that save lives at the same rate, if not more, in programs that take lives. I believe in the biz, it's, it's what's called the circle of life. Okay, it's the yin and the yang. It's like, the, it's like a seesaw in a playground, you guys. Okay, you have to have two kids of equal weight to achieve balance. Mm. Yeah, but when the high school football jock wants to seesaw with the kindergartner, <laughs> You're going to create a catapult, and that is an act of war. That is an act of war. <laughs> For sure. Now, the seventh point we already talked about, it's about ending police brutality. We, we talked about that earlier. So let's move on to point number eight, which states, we want freedom for all black men held in federal, state, county, and city prisons uh, and jails. We believe that all black people should be released from the many jails and prisons because they have not received a fair and impartial trial. America has the largest prison population in the world because we don't really care what we're number one at. 
as long as we're number one at it. <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> now, in the case of Munta Kim, who we talked about earlier, it is ev evident uh, that the criminal justice system was trying to lock up a revolutionary. There's evidence about who actually fired the gun and killed the two officers. And it was proven that he, in fact, did not fire that gun. Yet, he still remains in prison today. In 1969, Bobby Seal was arrested after delivering an anti-war speech at a college in Chicago. He was invited to be there, right? He didn't like to show up and like grab a bullhorn and stop yelling like, <laughs> let me tell you about the motherfucking war. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh. Invited him to talk and stuff. Seal was arrested for inciting violence. Again, I want to reiterate, he was making an anti-war speech, which is like literally the opposite of violence. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, they, this was, his, you have to remember, Bobby Seal is from San Francisco, right? Uh, when he was arrested and put on trial, they did not let him uh, wait for his attorney to show up from San Francisco. So he decided to represent himself, right? Here's, here's what happened. Bobby Seal was invited to speak. The revolution in this country, that's a kind, is in fact people coming forth demand freedom. He then left and didn't have anything to do with the demonstrations or riots or confrontations in Chicago. But he was arrested on the advice of the uh, FBI, and he was later indicted for that speech. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it gets crazier speech. because the judge would not allow Bobby Seal to defend himself. And it got so out of hand that they put tape around Bobby Seal's mouth and chained oh. him to a chair. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. Look, the only thing the judge didn't do to prove how racist he was was wear a clan hood during the trial. <laughs> this shit got so bad that people from all across the country were asking to stop the trial. Check this out. It started when Seal demanded to cross-examine a prosecution witness, accusing the judge of denying his constitutional rights to defend himself. The judge ordered him to sit down and be quiet, but the fiery Black Panther leader continued to cry out. The judge told the marshals to hold him down, and that started several days of insanity. He kept insisting on his right to represent himself, and a judge's response to that was to order the bailiffs to put gaffer tape over his mouth and tie him to his chair. Oh, my I mean, God. It couldn't have been more definitive if they had put a sign on him saying slave. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it turned out Bobby could make noise and say things through the gag. Nineteen sixty nine, folks. In European countries, revolution who uh, revolutionaries who have committed far grander acts of violence have been set free after they have served their sentence and express remorse, like Munta Kim, who expressed remorse about what happened to those police officers. Here's the thing. When it comes to criminal justice, America is like an abusive parent that sends their kids to their room without dinner, except that's, it's like for life. Like they do it like all the time. It's just forever. It's like a forever thing. 
look, as long as Black Panther revolutionaries are in prison, but thieving bankers are not, this criminal justice system will not and cannot be trusted. So uh, the ninth point, or point nine, uh, this states that we want all black people when brought to trial to be tried in a court by a jury of their peer group of people from their black communities. A de uh, as defined by the Constitution of the United States, we believe that the courts should allow the United States Constitution so that uh, black people will receive fair trials. The 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution gives a man to be tried by his peer group. A peer is a person from a similar economic, social, religious, geographical, environmental, mm. historical, and racial background. To do this, the court will be forced to select a jury from the black community from which the black def defendant came from. We have been and are being tried by all white juries that have no understanding of the average reasoning man of the black community. I think this one is pretty simple, right? Just because you're some white kid from the burbs that can quote Tupac doesn't mean that you'll understand the struggles of being black and brown in this country. But our justice system sure does like to think so because they can get jiggy with it, huh? Come on. Am I right? Because <laughs> virtually every single Black Panther trial had a white jury when they were sentenced. Yeah, they did get jiggy. They got jiggy with oppression. I thought that was going to hit. That's okay. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not a lot of Will Smith fans, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> and, and finally, the last point of the Black Panther's 10-point uh, program was uh, we want land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one of the people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitled them a decent respect of opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impel them the separation. That sounds a little confusing, so let's break that down a little bit. <laughs> Remember, Hugh Newton was a law student. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, basically, what they're saying here is that any laws that separates, separate us from our rights to land, bread, housing, education, clothing, justice, and peace, we should separate ourselves from those laws. Mm. Yeah. This is basically calling for a divorce from an abusive system that exploits people for their labor and resources and gives them nothing in return. Mm. The problem is sometimes you have an ex that wants to like gaslight you and then set your shit on fire and taser you with the balls, but still say they like love you, you know? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> which, which makes the divorce process like way longer and more difficult. <laughs> I have to clarify, I I'm not speaking from experience on the specifics. Of <laughs> <laughs> Some people might have to, I, I, as, a, as a legal right. <laughs> Now, look, I know some folks are going to say, well, Krish, look, we have a lot of these things, okay? America is not like living in the dark ages. Okay, we got rid of slavery here, kind of. And sure, <laughs> sure, we support slave labor in other countries, but that's because we need our devices to watch porn on the go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a matter of efficiency. But this is the difference between the white perspective and the minority perspective. A lot of white people compare the state now to where it used to be. And a lot of minority communities are talking about where it should be. These 10 points mm. reflect where we should be while recognizing where we are and understanding where we come from. 
Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode. If you guys enjoyed this content, please make sure that you hit the like button and the share button. Get this out there to as many people as you can. Send it out to some friends. Send it out to some enemies. Send it out. Put it. Put it in some groups. Um, content like this is often suppressed, and it is up to. Uh, I depend on you guys to share this stuff out and like this stuff to make sure that it's shown to new people, um, and new people learn about this channel. And if you haven't, uh, please hit the subscribe button uh, to make sure that you are getting notifications when we put videos up. I'm going to be putting videos up every single week on this channel, content like this, uh, more, more scripted uh, comedy content. There will be some rantier content, some audio content, some interview stuff uh, coming up as well. Um, these, what you're seeing in these videos is from the Citizen Revolution live virtual comedy shows uh so if you are a a a fan of uh this this sort of stuff and you want to see it live uh in a virtual setting of course um please uh, get tickets for these shows um what I'm doing with these shows is 50% uh, of the ticket sales is going to a grassroots organization, uh, activists, uh, journalists, venues across the country, people that really need help uh, that aren't being helped by, uh, by, by the federal government right now. So, so it's up to us to help each other out, and this is, this is me doing my part. Uh, so since I talk about these larger ideas, these socially conscious topics, uh, in my comedy, I figured I should. Um, I, I wanted to donate to uh, to groups that stand for these these causes and issues and ideas that I uh, talk about often, uh, especially on this channel. This particular show, uh, I donated 100% of the ticket sales to the Black Visions Collective in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They are a uh, POC queer driven community-based uh, organizers that are helping out protesters that have uh, been wrongfully arrested for the act of protesting. So I donated 100% of the ticket sales to that. So if, if you're watching this video, you weren't able to make it to the to live stand-up comedy show where we discuss the Black Panthers, and you want to donate to the Black Vision Collective, the links are in the description below. So please check out the links, uh, the ticket links and the donation links, and um, make sure that you share. Um, like I said, the, the Citizen Revolution comedy shows, they happen every Friday at 9 p.m. If you want to, you can, um, you can, you can check out all of the dates uh, on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, as a, a full-time touring performer, that has basically lost a majority of, uh, of my work. Uh, being a touring performer, uh, these virtual comedy shows, sustaining memberships and album sales are pretty much how I'm going to be earning my living right now. And it's also a way that I can um, continue to help, uh, like I said, grassroots organizations, activists, journalists, and small business venues that I've worked with across the country uh, that, are, um, that, are, that are kind of struggling right now. So uh, yeah, so if you want to uh, check out the links in the description, but make sure you hit that subscribe, make sure you hit that share button, make sure you hit that like button and get the word out. Uh, you can follow me on a bunch of social media stuff, at Haha, and stay tuned for more videos because we are going to be uh, putting up weekly videos on this channel uh, discussing big topics like this, discussing topics that you don't normally see on, uh, on any sort of mainstream media or uh, any sort of mainstream comedy channels. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Until next week.